Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Katie and today I'm going to be comparing two brands of oil pastel. So this is a medium that I've not used before, so completely new for me and I wanted to test out a higher end and lower end brand. So we'll be comparing the Pentel oil pastels and the Sennelier oil pastels. Like I said, I'm completely new to oil pastels, so I want to see from a beginner's point of view how these compare and how they work because they are very different price points and I want to see how the line quality is, I want to see the texture and the softness and how they blend. Throughout this video I'm going to be sharing a process for how I created this piece in my sketchbook which is a mix of gouache and oil pastels so I'll be talking through some of the techniques and things that we're looking for whilst I'm creating this piece. I'll also be creating some swatch tests in my sketchbook where we'll be looking at opacity, both on light and dark mediums, as well as things like texture and blending and line weight. I hope that all makes sense and that this is going to be a helpful and informative video and I also hope you enjoy seeing my process. So we're going to start with the process part of the video and I'm going to share the piece that I'm creating today. Here are the pastels that I'll be comparing, so the Pentel oil pastels, which are quite short and stubby, there's not a huge amount there, they're quite thin in comparison to the Sennelier ones. You can see they're slightly longer and they also have more of a bullet shaped tip at the end and I do find that they are thicker as well. So you can see there I've tried to pick similar colours and there's definitely more of the Sennelier pastel. And I'm going to be working in my Strathmore mixed media sketchbook and as well as the oil pastels, I'll also be using gouache paint. Obviously I am still a beginner with oil pastels and I didn't want to do a full piece just with those because I wanted to see how it mixed with other media, particularly for one of the techniques which we're going to come on to first. But I did start by laying down my basic shapes in the gouache and I think that it's a really nice way to use mixed media of comparing and using things that you already have and are confident with and then intermixing it with something that maybe you're not so sure of. So obviously here it's oil pastels and it just felt like an easy way in of using them together and not having to rely on just the brand new medium and perhaps losing my confidence a little bit because I'm not sure what I'm doing. And so mixing it in with the gouache was a really good way for me to use them and I do think that the piece turned out really nicely and I was really happy with the result. So I am just putting down the base layer because our next section is a technique which is the resist technique. So I'm putting down some of the Sennelier here and I do also test it with the Pentel and I'm not trying to fill in all of the page, I'm just trying to get a bit of the pigment from each down. So there is a lot of texture there as it is. I'm not filling in all of the page, I'm just putting down some of the colour because I want to see how the gouache works and sits on top of it. Coming in with a white one as well just to fill in other areas, so these are all buildings in an urban scene and so I'm trying to fill in a lot more shapes. And then mixing up a lighter colour to see how it sits on the top. And I think this would be a really nice technique for creating weathered and aged effects. It creates a really unique texture that I haven't been able to replicate elsewhere and obviously this will work with like crayons and things but I do find it doesn't work as well as this with things like Neo Colors because especially with the Neo Color 2s they're water soluble. So I thought using these oil pastels would be a really fun way to experiment with textures and I definitely was pleased with the result. The gouache is obviously water based and so it sits on top of the oil pastel and resists it which creates this lovely mottled effect and like I said I do think this would work really nicely on a larger scale and for drawing like old buildings and distressed things like that. So now I'm coming in and filling in some of the areas of the painting with some green gouache. I wanted to add some green because it is obviously a very urban scene. This is somewhere in Italy. And I'm using a reference from a copyright free image site so I will leave the link to where I found this view down below. So I am just filling in some green around the back. You can see I've left some spaces because I want to add in the roofs and there is a tower there on the right and I just wanted to map out the area of that so I know where to come in with my oil pastels later. Next up we're going to be looking at the line weights of each pastel. 
So I'm coming in with the sennelier and at the end of this I'm still showing the process but I'm also going to show you some swatches in my sketchbook. But I found that the sennelier, especially some shades, were super soft and so I couldn't get as precise of a line as I could with the harder Pentel pastels. You can see here I was trying to add on some details but I just found it a little harder to control compared to the harder Pentels. They don't wear down quite as quickly as the Sennelier because they aren't as soft. The texture is really quite different despite the texture on the page looking the same. I think when you are using them you can really feel how soft the Sennelier are compared to these ones. And I think because these don't have the like bullet shaped tip, I can get a really precise angle and line on here compared to the Sennelier. So I did prefer to use the Pentels for lines like this on some of the buildings and also when I was doing the sharper angles of these rooftops. So it was slightly hard to capture on the camera because these are quite neon colours, so apologies if the colours aren't quite right, but I thought this was a good way to test how neat I could be with them. There are obviously a lot of triangles and angles on these rooftops, so I was trying two different shades of orange, and I had a lot more shade range on the Pentels than I did with the Sennelier's because the Pentels were in a pack of 50 and the Sennelier were in a pack of 24. And I'll talk about the price differences at the end. But here I'm just showing you some line thickness tests in my sketchbook. So you could see I could really use the end of the Pentel oil pastel to create that really thick line. And for the Sennelier I did rip off the end of the paper that it comes in to try and get the same effect and it's definitely a lot less thick although it does still put a lot of colour down on the page. You can kind of see on the top left it leaves a bit of crumbs and especially here when I'm doing the heavy touch experiments the Pentels leave a lot more crumbs and parts of the oil pastel on the page whereas I don't find that happens at all with the Sennelier because they are so soft. So although they do do very similar in terms of the thickness and the pressures, I can do really light lines and heavy lines with both of them. I do find that the Pentels create more crumbs. So now I'm going to do a smudge test just to see how this works and they are very similar. Here are the Pentel ones and I find that it smudges fine if that's sort of the effect you want. The Sennelier, I'm trying to pick similar colours, it does give a slightly different texture but they're very similar in the amount that they smudge. So now onto blending, so I'm back to my process here and I wanted to see how I laid the two colours together. And with the Pentels I found that when I was putting the light down or the dark one down first, it kind of just sat on top, it didn't really blend it together, it didn't make a new shade, it felt like the two colours were just sitting on the top. You can see some more of the crumbs there. And then comparing it to the Sennelier ones, I put down the darker orange there and I'm going on top with this yellow because I didn't have a proper orange. And it's making the orange for me, so I do feel like these, because of the texture, because they're so soft, it felt like it wasn't just sitting on top, it was actually colouring and changing the colour of the orange that was already laid down. So it's the same with the light and then the darker one on top, but it does leave a lot more colour on the nib because again it's the softness and you can see that there on this yellow one. But it creates a nice shade and it definitely feels like it blends really nicely. But again, you can see how much I'm wearing down the pastel because they're so soft, so I think you would wear these down a lot quicker than the Pentel ones so they wouldn't last quite as long despite them obviously being slightly thicker and longer. So I'm just coming in and filling in some more shapes on the buildings and I'm using the salmon colour Pentel for that because I didn't have the right shade in the Sennelier ones. And then a blending test in my sketchbook. So I'm putting down the white and then I'm going to come in with like a really hot pink. I feel like this was a good test with a white and then a darker colour just to see how it works. So on the left I'm putting the pink on top and seeing how it works with the white and then trying to make it even lighter by coming in with the white again and it does create a lighter colour. It's not doing nothing but it does feel like it's harder to combine in a really smooth way. It kind of just feels like it's smudging together 
And then on this one on the right, I wanted to see it sort of fading up. So the bottom is without any white and then the white at the top. And I'm trying to make an even lighter pink. And it does create a nice fade, but you can definitely see where the edges of each colour is. So I wanted to try it with the Softer Sennelier. I'm doing the exact same technique. It's not quite the same shade of pink, but it really felt like it was merging with the white that's already there. And same on top, it's kind of like using paint and I was really impressed with the texture. Again, coming in with the plain pink and merging it with the white. And I come back in with the white exactly like I did with the Pentel and it just created a really lovely blending effect. It felt a lot easier to do and a lot more smooth. And you can definitely see that in the final results here. So now onto some pencil layering. This is a technique I've seen quite a few people do, especially with graphite. Although I just used a dark luminance pencil. And I'm laying down the colour first. So this is obviously the Sennelier, which is a lot thicker and feels a lot smoother than the Pentels. So this is just a brown luminance pencil like I mentioned. And it doesn't really carve out, but it doesn't sit on top either. It creates a nice texture, and I think there's definitely more experiments that could be done here. You can see it picks it up on the nib, and I think it works better for darker colours. It doesn't really do the same effect on the Pentel. It was a lot harder to sort of make a dent through. But again, I think if I was using like a graphite, it would work better. But I did want to compare the two, and I think the Sennelier is winning here. Although, obviously, I don't think this is the best way to use them, and I definitely can play around with this effect a bit more in future artworks. You can see here, it really just picks up some of the oil pastel that's down there, and you can also see the state of my hands. This is from the Sennelier, because they are so soft, I found them extremely messy. So onto opacity now. I'm just going to fill in some of the areas down here with some more greens. I had a lot more shade range of greens with the Pentels compared to the Sennelier, but in terms of adding on opacity things like this with the colours, they were very similar, and I think for like final finishing touches and things like this, you can't really tell the difference. You wouldn't know which one is the Pentel and which one is the Sennelier when I'm using them individually for line work, whereas I think you can if you are blending them together or doing a large patch of colour. So I'm just adding some greenery down here, using some scribbles and lines, and again, I wouldn't know which ones I used with the Sennelier versus the Pentel, except maybe this lighter one. This has such a lovely texture. I do find that some of the colours of the Sennelier have a softer texture than other shades of the same brand, which I think is interesting and is obviously dependent on the pigment. Now onto the white test. So. I found that the Sennelier one was really pigmented, it gave a really nice clean white on the sky. And so I used that mostly for some of the clouds here. And then when I was coming in with the Pentel, you can see it just doesn't lay on top the same. It's quite transparent compared to the Sennelier. And although you know it's there, you can definitely see how the white from the Sennelier is so much stronger compared to the Pentel. So I think some lighter colours are definitely better in the Sennelier compared to the Pentel, but we're going to do some swatch tests in my sketchbook to see how they compare here. The top one is Posca Paint Pen, and the one underneath is Gouache. And these are the darker colours on the top, and I'll show you them on the light as well at the bottom. But I'm putting down the Pentel ones first here on the left side of the swatches, and you can definitely see the crumbs coming into play there, but very similar on the acrylic paint pen and the gouache, it sits on top and obviously you can definitely see the white more here where it is on a darker colour. Then I'm trying to colour match very similarly to the Pento ones with the Sennelier and especially here you can see they're very similar. The Sennelier ones I think obviously are slightly thicker but even with the yellow I don't think you can tell a difference. And that's what I was saying earlier about it being different depending on the colour. So I was quite disappointed with this yellow because it really does just look like the Pentel one. Whereas here with the white, you can see it's a lot thicker and way more opaque compared to the Pentel one. So I think that's quite interesting. I think it depends on what shade that you're using. 
And then down here at the bottom, again, we've got the Posca acrylic paint pen on the top, and underneath that is some more gouache. I'm using slightly different colours here compared to the ones on the top, with a very neon green, but I still wanted to see the white just to see how it worked on the lighter colours. And then again with the Sennelier, it definitely has less of a rough texture on the edges compared to the Pentels, but in terms of the texture, it's very similar. But again, you can really see where the white shines compared to the Pentel ones. So I am showing you down here on this very light swatch as well, but very, very similar. Although no crumbs at all on the Sennelier ones compared to the Pentel ones. You can definitely see that here in this close up, but I want to next move on to sealing. So I'm just putting down a little bit of yellow from each of them and then I'm going to cover up the rest of the swatches and spray it with this Sennelier fixative spray. I couldn't find a Pentel one so I am just using Sennelier here and seeing how they both work with it. The fixative dries really quickly and you can see that it's completely dry when the cardboard I've used to cover the rest of it has gone back to its normal colour. I didn't find it affected the swatch colours at all, but it definitely worked much better on the Pentel pastels. So I'm putting my finger over and I can feel that there's a like coat on the Pentel ones, whereas I can still feel the waxiness and the actual pastel texture on the Sennelia ones, and so it did smudge it. And I found that it does need many more layers to fix the Sennelier ones. So I did two coats on here and it didn't really seal the Sennelier one at all. But it was absolutely fine on the Pentel one and that really wasn't budging. So now onto the final look of the artwork. And doing my little finishing touches I added on all the windows. And where it did create a bit of smudginess and messiness on the borders. I did use an eraser to try and get rid of some of the marks and it did a pretty good job but obviously it's oil so it's never going to get rid of it all completely. Here are the final looks of the artwork but the video isn't over yet. I'm going to come in with some outro chat and talk about some pros and cons of both the Sennelier and the Pentel ones but I did just want to show you how the artwork turned out. And I was really pleased with it. I think there were a lot of textures and it's interesting to use this new medium in my mixed media work. So to round up this video, I also wanted to do a quick pros and cons list for both of the brands. Obviously, I talked a little bit about these things in the voiceover, but I wanted to round it up and just do a comparison, especially with regards to the price. So I'm going to start with pros and cons for the Sennelier. I found that the biggest pro was obviously the texture and the blending. These blended super nicely, I found that the colours merged really nicely together and I really was impressed with how they felt. They really did feel like a higher end product. The materials and the pigments felt really nice to use, especially coming from a beginner. I could definitely see the difference between the Pentel and the Sennelier in terms of texture. Because I'm not planning on using like loads of oil pastel in my work, I probably wouldn't use the blending as much so that's definitely something to bear in mind because I know you can create whole pieces just with like the blending effect compared to how I probably use them which would be for final touches. I'm also really impressed with the opacity especially for the white. You saw that in the comparing of the whites in this video and it was just so much more opaque than the Pentel one and I think it layers really nicely over different mediums. Like I said, some of the colours do vary. I found some are way softer than others, obviously that depends on the pigment, but especially with the lighter colours, I thought that there were some that were a lot better than the Pentels. The yellow that I tested obviously was very similar, but I think you could definitely see a difference in the white. I also really like that you can buy these individually. That's how I started with the Sennelier, was that I bought I think I bought three at first and then I'm building up my collection because I was really impressed with them. But I really like that you can buy them individually, I think that's a good way to start. Or if you want to test them out yourself. However, that does lead us onto one of the biggest cons with this product, which is the price. So this box of 24 costs around about £37-38, which compared to the Pentel, which we'll come on to, is such a huge difference. 
So I think the price point on this one is definitely a negative, but obviously you are getting really high quality artist grade materials and these are a brand that is very well respected, but definitely something to bear in mind, especially if you're not going to be using them a whole amount. I know it can get really easy to get carried away with art supplies, so I think that's definitely something to consider. And then another con that I found with these is that they do smudge a lot. They are quite messy to work with. I found that my hand got covered in the oil pastel because they are so soft, which is obviously a pro and a con because I just found that it was really messy and it's easy to like ruin your artwork if you just smudge it in the wrong way. So something to balance there. Another con with the Sennelier is that I found when I was sealing it, it needed a lot more coverage. I used the Sennelier Oil Pastel Spray Fixative and it just wasn't coating this one enough. I could still feel the oil pastels on the surface of the paper and for the actual main piece of artwork that I created, I used at least five layers of the spray fixative, letting it dry in between each one and doing light layers. But if I was really heavy handed on it, it would still smudge. So you're definitely going to need a lot more layers if you are loading up the Sennelier pastels. Compared to the Pentel ones, this was sealed in just two layers, so I was really impressed with that. You're obviously going to use a lot less spray fixative than when you were using the Sennelio ones, but again that comes down to the texture and consistency of the oil pastel, but I was really impressed with how these sealed. So next up on the pros and cons for the Pentel oil pastels, a big pro for me is obviously the price. I think these are really affordable oil pastels, so this pack of 50 was I paid £8 for these, whereas obviously this pack of 24, so you're getting more than half less, was way more in terms of price, 38 versus 8 So I think these are a really good brand to start with, especially if you're interested in using oil pastels. But like I said, you can really tell the difference between the texture. Another pro is obviously the colour range, you're getting way more for your money, and I find that having more colours definitely made it easier. Because I only had 24 of these, obviously I couldn't colour match everything perfectly, but it's something to think about, especially with blending. If you are creating a whole piece just with the Pentels, then I think it's easier to get that different shade range. In terms of comparing them, I think if you are just using these for final touches, they are very similar. You saw that with the line quality and the line density, and also the opacity in some of these. The darker ones, I think, are definitely on par in terms of getting just the line down but one of the cons is definitely the blending. So I found these really difficult to blend together. It was almost as if the colour sat on top of the other one rather than actually blending together, which is what the Sennelier did. So I think there's a con in terms of creating a really smooth blend. Because they are so much harder than the Sennelier, that's why they are so different, and it definitely takes a lot of work to try and get them smooth and to cover the paper in a really easy way. Definitely takes a lot more work to get a higher coverage. And one of the other things I noticed, which similar with the Sennelier in terms of it being messy, but in a different way, is that this left loads of crumbs on the surface. So where the Sennelier was smudging, this was creating lots of different crumbs and particles on top of my artwork. And then if you do move them with your hand, then it will smudge in a different way because you're moving these little bits of color. And so it's very easy to get different bits of color elsewhere on your painting. So they definitely both have a con in terms of messiness, but I found it in different ways. As you saw at the end, I was able to rub off some of the colour from the edges where I didn't want it, but because it is oil pastel, it will be there, and it's not capable to get the whole thing off. And I did find going in with a brush, especially for some of these crumb bits, was really helpful in getting them off of the art. So I think that's my main summary between these two. I obviously haven't been able to test the light fastedness on both of these, but they both claim to be fade resistant, and so I think that they would last a very long time. So that rounds up my oil pastel review and how I found them as a beginner. Although they feel very different when you're using them, I think the results can be quite similar, especially if you're using them just for line work or highlights at the end of a piece. The biggest difference is definitely blending, in which case I would highly recommend the Sennelier for that. And if you're trying to get a really smooth surface and not have to rub quite as hard, then the Sennelier is definitely the one for you. But for beginners especially, I think these are a really good product for the price with the shade range and because they are so easy to use and readily available, I think they're a really good one to experiment with. 
I do just have to push a little bit harder and once you've used the Sennelier I think you can definitely tell the difference and I'd love to know if you've been able to compare them and what you think down below in the comments too. So that rounds up this video, I really hope it was useful and you found it helpful if you are thinking of using oil pastels in the future. If you have any more tips and tricks for me, especially in terms of like the sealing or the blending, then please do let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you have a really lovely week and I will see you next Sunday with a new YouTube video. See you later. Bye.